Hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna cover seven frequently asked questions for a senior accountant's job interview. And senior accountants are those who have experience between two and five years. And typically those are either spent all in public accounting or maybe a mix of public and private. And in some cases it's entirely uh, private industry accounting. So we're gonna go over these uh, seven questions and their answers and the secret sauce or what I like to hear as a hiring manager today as a corporate controller what I like to hear from candidates that make me immediately realize that this is the right candidate for the job. So we'll go through all of these questions and their answers coming right up. This is your first time watching one of my videos. Welcome to the channel. My name is Bill Hanna and I'm the financial controller. I'm a licensed CPA in the great state of New York and my current role as a corporate controller entails that I hire accountants from all levels, from recent graduates or junior accountants all the way up to accounting managers. And this channel is all about giving you my best practices, my experience in hiring these candidates and giving you the best answers that you should provide in job interviews. And so without further ado, let's dive in. Okay, going over the first question, the question goes, if a company has three bank accounts for processing payments, what is the number of ledgers it needs? And so I'm gonna give you the answer first and then I'm gonna give you why the hiring manager is asking this question. So the answer is that you need three ledgers. If you have three bank accounts, you need three separate ledgers for those accounts. But the reason why this question, even though it's an easy question, is being asked is that the hiring manager is assessing whether you worked in an actual real accounting operation. Because if you did, you'll know that if you combine three bank accounts into one ledger, you'll have tons of reconciliation issues. You'll, you will never be able to reconcile the books. So um, you need to separate three bank accounts into three separate ledgers so that you're able to do a bank reconciliation properly. And that's the answer to question number one. Okay, question number two and the question reads, what methods have you used for estimating bad debt? And so there are two scenarios here. So maybe you've done it in the past on your previous job. And if you did, you can talk about it. And if you haven't, you can tell the hiring manager that you haven't done it in the previous job, but basically you remember from school, from studying accounting, that there are two ways for estimating bad debt. It's either a percentage of accounts receivable or a percentage of sales. And the most common method is gonna be a percentage of accounts receivable. Because usually then what you do is you look at the aging of receivable and for each bucket you assign a percentage of that bucket as an allowance for doubtful accounts. So basically uh, for 30 days age receivable, you then assign a low percentage, maybe 1% as allowance. Uh, and then as you go up, so for 60 days aged uh, accounts receivable, then you assign 2% and then you escalate it all the way to past maybe 120 days. That's the highest likelihood of not collecting. That's gonna be 5% of that being accrued as allowance for doubtful accounts. Uh, so basically the two, me two main methods is gonna be a percentage of our sales or percentage of AR. That's the question, uh, the answer to question number two. All right, question number three, and the question goes, can you give me an example of how you would explain a complex accounting process or finance data to someone in HR, tech support, or another team? So basically the hiring manager is trying to gauge your ability to break down an accounting concept to someone who's not in finance, someone in HR or in sales or tech support or any other team. So basically uh, you have to prepare for this before the interview so that you're not having to come up with this story on the fly. Uh, in my example, uh, in my case, I'll bring up an example of explaining to the HR team uh, accrued vacation or accrued benefits or how that is booked on a financial statement. Uh, I have to explain that to them so I can get from them the data that I need for accrued vacation or accrued benefits. Another example is talking to the sales team, uh, maybe on uh, revenue recognition rules. So basically, uh, you have to explain to them how revenue is being recognized based on ASC 606 or revenue recognition standards. Uh, so that's another example. So come up with this answer before the interview and play it in your head so that you're not having to come up with it during the interview itself. And that's basically question number three. Question number four and the question reads, when you buy a piece of equipment for a company, what is the impact on the three financial statements? So basically here you're buying a piece of equipment and uh, the first impact obviously is cash. So cash is being reduced because you purchased a piece of equipment, uh, but also in the balance sheet, the PP&E or property plant and equipment will go up. So a reduction in cash and increase on PP&E. 
And then the second uh, financial statements is income statement. So basically the impact here is in the depreciation line. Uh, so you, as you depreciate uh, the PP&E or the piece of equipment, uh, basically you're recording a depreciation on the P&L each month. And then the final financial statement is gonna be a statement of cash flow. And basically, if you remember, it has three sections, uh, cash flow from operating activity, uh, investing activity and financing activity. This is gonna be in the investing activity section when you're investing in the company's future by buying a piece of equipment. Uh, so cash is gonna be going out. So it's an outflow of cash because you're spending um, on a piece of equipment. So this is the question number four, the impact of the three financial statements from buying a piece of equipment. That's question number four on my list. Okay, question number five and the question goes, what's the difference between a trial balance and a balance sheet? And obviously, as you can see, the two expressions here have the word balance in them. A try balance and a balance sheet have the word balance in them. So the hiring manager is trying to see if you're confused uh, by these two concepts. And so the answer to that is that a try balance is a summary of all of the balances in the general ledger, while the balance sheet is a statement of position of the company showing the assets, liabilities, and owner's equity. And so this is the basic answer, right? The trial balance is the summary of balances of a general ledger, while the uh, balance sheet is a, a statement of position of the company showing assets, liabilities, and owner's equity. But then you can go, go a step beyond and explain that the process of cre creating the financial statements or the balance sheet in particular begins from book and journal entries, and then taking that into a ledger, and then summarizing the ledger balances into a trial balance, and from a trial balance, you produce the balance sheet. So this shows your expertise, this shows your knowledge that you understand how the data flows from journal entries to general ledger, trial balance, and then balance sheet. Uh, so this is how you can demonstrate your experience and your knowledge. And this is question number five on my list. Okay, question number six, and the question goes, what happens to the cash which is collected from the customers but is not recorded as revenue? And basically the hiring manager here is gauging your knowledge of revenue recognition rules and deferred revenue. Uh, and so the answer here basically is that if the cash is collected, it's not revenue that's not related to a service or product that's delivered in the period, most likely it means it's related to deferred revenue or revenue that's gonna be recognized in the future as we del deliver the goods and services. So that's the answer to question number six on deferred revenue is that not all the cash that's being collected is gonna be related to revenue in the period. Some of it might be related to future service or product that's going to be delivered to the customer and that's going to be recorded as deferred revenue. That's the answer to question number six. Question number seven and the question goes, can you describe an accounting process that you helped improve? And for this one here, I want you before going in into any job interview to come up with this answer beforehand. What accounting process have you improved in the past? So think of it, play it in your head so that when you're going in, you're not thinking of it for the first time. So in my example here, for my, in my case, uh, when I went to work for one of the companies in the past, uh, we employees were submitting expenses to uh, a platform uh, which was Expensify uh, and these then expenses are being recorded manually into the accounting package or QuickBooks and what I did is I created a link or an API connection an automatic connection between Expensify and QuickBooks so this way all of the expenses are flowing correct correctly into QuickBooks so it eliminates error and also it uh, reduces the number or the amount of time needed for the books to be closed uh, so think of this answer beforehand come up with something that you improved in the past and speak to it and play it in your head so this way you can answer this question during the interview. If you heard any question during your job interview that's been tricky or been difficult, go ahead and share it in the comment section below. And if you like this video, please smash the like button and I'll see you in the next video.